Welcome back. Next up here tonight, we're focusing on a bacterial infection that impacts hundreds of thousands of people each year, especially in the summertime, Lyme disease. And it comes from a deer tick bite. And although cases are highest in other parts of the country, we also see people with the disease here in Florida. And tonight, our in-depth reporter Anthony Hill speaks with a local woman who's living with an extreme form of Lyme disease and what experts say you can do to keep yourself from being infected. I got my PhD in public health at the University of South Florida. With 20 years of experience in healthcare, Tara Foti scored her dream job working at Kaiser Permanente in Oakland, California, one of the United States leading healthcare providers. I got to work with a dream mentor and we did um, really impactful research about substance use during pregnancy. Life was great until she started feeling chronically fatigued and experiencing unbearable physical pain. I had to request work accommodations to have a flexible schedule. But soon it became clear that she wouldn't be able to perform at work. So she moved back to Tampa to be close to family and her established health care providers. So I got a call from the health department saying we got your blood work. You are CDC positive with Lyme disease and I was very surprised. She was diagnosed with late stage neurological Lyme disease in January of 2023, though she says she doesn't know how she got it. And I'm like, OK, that makes sense. I have neurological symptoms, but what does one do? with late stage neurological Lyme disease. And they said the goal actually would just be to keep you comfortable. If there's ticks there, you have a chance of being bit by those ticks. And when you're bit by those ticks, then it can spread the disease. I wanted to learn more about this disease, which was first identified in Lyme, Connecticut in 1975 and how to prevent getting it. So I went to Dr. George Springer's office. He's an expert on the matter. What I tell people to do all the time if they're trying to prevent it is that if you've been out hiking, certainly in the woods or those areas, is just to do an inspection of each other. Dr. Springer says you'd be looking for a red spot or rash. If they're present, it's important to see a doctor immediately to possibly get started on antibiotics. So for example, these are a couple of herbs that we'll use many times to actually help with microorganisms in the body. They're very broad spectrum antimicrobials. They work on yeast, bacteria, and they can be helpful also as far as Lyme disease is concerned. Generally, if somebody has Lyme disease in Florida, it's because they have been infected from a tick with that bacteria in a different state. But how common are the ticks that spread Lyme disease in Florida? So in Florida, it actually turns out um, to be really quite common north of essentially the I-4 corridor. So from Tampa, working your way northward uh, up to essentially Tallahassee. And both professors say there aren't any tick population control programs with high efficacy like we have for mosquitoes. And they can show that they have some effect, but they really don't have a what we call a population effect. They don't really knock the population down to a level that it really reduces the risk for the human population. I will say one thing about Florida, we have fire ants. And it turns out that fire ants love to eat the juveniles and the eggs of ticks and mites. So they have become our actually best friend when it comes to Lyme disease. So I take a number of supplements and medications every day. I've got a list of uh, different things I take and when and what it's for. As for Tara, well, she still feels fatigued, but she's recently found a specialist who gives her hope about the future. He really was the first one that I felt could put the whole picture together. But the trouble with that is he's not in Tampa. He's across the state. He's in Miami, doesn't take insurance. You know, so this becomes challenging in other ways. In Tampa, I'm in-depth reporter Anthony Hill, ABC Action News.